Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and as promised in the previous video I told you I was going to discuss an essay by Richard Dedekind. So uh, you can easily find that essay on the internet and read it for yourself. It's not very long. It's about 140 pages but I'm going to be discussing the introduction and especially the ideas of Dedekind regarding irrational numbers. <laughs> uh, of course, there is no such thing, but that's exactly the point why I'm going to be discussing it. So his first uh, sentence says, my attention was first directed to the considerations which form the subject of this pamphlet. And as a professor in the Polytechnic School in uh, Zurich, I found myself for the first time obliged to lecture upon the elements of the differential calculus and felt more keenly than ever before the lack of a really scientific foundation for arithmetic. So I'd say good on him that he realized his lack of understanding, but not so good that he was ignorant of the fact that a very sound foundation for arithmetic was already established in geometry. As I showed you in the previous video, I talked about the abstract unit, the geometric and the algebraic versions of the unit. Okay. I also talked about physical units. So I know he later mentions geometry, but he does so with a very superficial understanding of how arithmetic is directly derived from geometry. Of course, no one after Euclid or before me even had a clue about the meaning of the abstract unit. Sure, they tossed it around almost about as much as they do the word intuition, whose meaning is a black hole in their minds. Please do not use the word intuition uh, ever again uh, until you look it up and know what it means. If you use intuition in any sense that involves rational thinking, you're an, you're an idiot and there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it either. So now uh, get yourself a cup of coffee because you're not going to be able to understand my short response in just a few minutes. So I'm going to paste uh, a copy of this in the in in the pinned comment of my video so don't worry about being able to read all this so what i'm what i'm trying to explain here is that there is no actual unit in geometry other than a measuring tool and of course when you uh, construct so-called lines and circles and stuff in geometry you're not really constructing a line or a circle all you're doing is creating a visualization of what the perfect concept is okay so uh, a dot like you see or a period like you see there that's not a point or a place or a location it's just a way to denote or represent a point and explain to others what you mean likewise this here is not a line it's just a symbol for a line the actual definition of a line a straight line is the shortest distance between two points okay so I've explained some of the stuff in the previous video, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. But um, uh, in geometry, the measure of two lines composed of equal lengths is different because in each case, when I say equal lengths, I mean the lines divided into equal lengths. So what you see here in front of you has a space between each equal length. But if you just join them together, they're one line. OK, and so uh, what happens is we use one of these equal segments to measure each of these lines. So in this case here, in the first case, we use that equal segment to measure the whole line and we get what's called the abstract unit in algebra, which is five. One, two, three, four, five. Likewise, we do the same with this line. So that is an abstract unit in algebra. Algebra doesn't care about the size of the unit. Do you get that? Stop the video and think about that. Now, in geometry, we do care because this line is not equal to this line here. Okay? So, and we can do any of the operations of arithmetic on these lines without even an inkling of what is a number in geometry. In fact, the first uh, six books of Euclid are a build-up to the concept of number, which is introduced in a rather vague way in book seven of the elements. But I've corrected that because I've 
a defined number for the first time in human history correctly, and it applies to every actual number, not those uh, bogus objects that you call irrational numbers or real numbers. There are no such objects. The only numbers are the rational numbers. So um, in algebra, we speak of a measure in terms of the abstract unit. That is a unit whose size or magnitude is irrelevant. We count each of the equal parts and it turns out we have a number. So you, you need to stop here now and think about these things and perhaps read my, not perhaps, you should read my uh, discovery of number uh, in uh, an article I've written and I'll place a link to it to understand how my brilliant ancestors thought of these things and to give you a glimpse into the mind of how a genius thinks, okay? Because these things were certainly never understood by anyone after Euclid or before me. I am the first to reveal these things to you. They've never been published. There is no reference. And what you're learning here is vitally important because mathematics is the science of measure and number. And number is the most important concept in mathematics. So in his next uh, uh, line, Dierdekin says, in discussing the notion of the approach of a variable magnitude to a fixed limiting value, and especially improving the theorem that every magnitude, which grows continually but not beyond all limits, must certainly approach a limiting value. Um, so, of course, he would have to recourse to geometric evidence because being the fool that he was, he needed reassurance or assurance from the true foundations of mathematics, which is geometry. Geometry is the only sound foundation of mathematics from which we derive everything. Algebra, uh, calculus, mathematical statistics, and anything else that we useful that we do in science. And of course, this happens in accordance with my four guidelines of well-formedness, because there hasn't ever been anything substantial or meaningful published on what it means for a concept to be well-formed. And I'll give you a link to that right over here. So naturally, the entire concept of limiting calculus, which is not really a part of calculus as much as it is a part of set theory, is utter rubbish, as I've proved in the new calculus, okay? And so uh, I'll refrain from talking about that because you can download my free ebook. And the next uh, sentence of Dierdekin says, even now, such resort to geometric intuition, and there appears the word intuition. Uh, anytime you hear an academic use the word intuition, you can be almost certain he doesn't actually understand what he's talking about. Because if he knew what the word meant, he wouldn't use it. So, in the, even now, such a resort to the geometric intuition in the first presentation of the differential calculus, I regard as exceedingly useful from the didactic standpoint, and indeed indispensable, if one does not wish to lose too much time. <laughs> so I find that incredibly funny because now Dedekin moves from geometric evidences to geometric intuition, <laughs> which is complete nonsense because there are no axioms in sound Greek geometry, which is 100% the product of rational human thought. What that means is that another sentient being who is thinking rationally would be able to realize these very same concepts in exactly the same way. They're called nomena, okay, from the singular nomenon, uh, a word that was coined by Immanuel Kant, the German philosopher. He continues, but that this form of introduction into the differential calculus can make no claim to being scientific, no one will deny. Wow, read that again. So the idiots who came after him have been saying that calculus has been made rigorous and all that other bullshit, but there was no rigorous calculus before my new calculus. And, and you, could, you can tell that uh, even back then they didn't understand why calculus works. So, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> honesty from a mainstream academic is so refreshing. And it's very sad that this is now extinct. Quite clearly, Dierdekin realized that he didn't have a damn clue why calculus works and made no pretenses like modern academics do. So the next sentence says, 
For myself, this feeling of dissatisfaction was so overpowering that I made the fixed resolve to keep meditating on the question till I should find a purely arithmetic and perfectly rigorous foundation for the principles of infinitesimal analysis. There is so much wrong with that sentence. Unfortunately, Dierkin failed spectacularly, spectacularly, as did anyone else in the history of humans who came before me, because no one produced a rigorous formulation. The expressions purely arithmetic, perfectly rigorous, and principles of infinitesimal analysis are huge red flags. Okay, I'm certain Dierkin intended the use of purely arithmetic in an effort to disassociate arithmetic from geometry. But as I have explained, this cannot be done. Without the first five books of Euclid, you have no arithmetic whatsoever. You don't even have an idea what is a fraction or even a magnitude. Stop and think about that. So the use of perfectly rigorous is a malpractice by thousands of academic morons since Dedekind's time. How can a bird brain even know what it means to be rigorous if they have no clue what it means for a concept to be well defined? So finally, the principles of infinitesimal analysis is a double faux pas because principles should never precede the utter Newtonian delusion such as infinitesimal analysis. There is no such thing as an infinitesimal. It's utter nonsense, just as infinity is utter nonsense. And so all this BS is discussed and exposed in my free ebook for the incomprehensible and unbelievable rot that it is. You won't know until you study my free ebook. That statement uh, that Dedekin made so frequently that the differential calculus deals with continuous magnitude and yet an explanation of this continuity is no way given. This statement, sorry. So that's, of course, also really funny because the most important theorem in calculus, which is the mean value theorem from which the fundamental theorem is derived in one step, can easily be proved without knowing anything about real numbers or even numbers at all, which are a myth. Uh, real numbers are a myth in every respect. So again, uh, these are explained using both the floor tools, i.e. limits of the mainstream calculus, and also the rigorous uh, formulation of the new calculus in my free ebook. And then finally, uh, even the most rigorous expositions do not base their proofs upon continuity, but this is Dedekind speaking, but with more or less consciousness of the fact they either appeal to geometric notions or those suggested by geometry. Blah, blah, blah. So till this day, the con the concept of continuity is circular and hence undefined in mainstream calculus. And of course, I'm going to put this text so that you can read it slowly. I know I'm going a little fast. But the methods of calculus do not apply to a function that is not smooth. You can't even use calculus, you know, and even differential calculus is a bit of a, 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 a red flag because really calculus is about smooth functions and about uh, calculating volumes and areas, etc. Uh, in fact, there is no such thing as uh, a use of a derivative outside of a smooth function. It's not even defined if you don't have a smooth function. It's garbage. Okay, there's no such thing as an instant, instantaneous average like that idiot Gilbert Strang from MIT uh, often talks about in his books and in his videos, okay? And you can see a video that I produced on that topic. So uh, this is the end of the comment. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation. I've talked a little too fast and I'm very out of breath now. If you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber, click like and spread the news of this channel. I'm trying to reform mathematics and fix all the wrong notions and concepts in mathematics. I'm John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time, folks. Goodbye.